Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for hanging with me on this Thursday. And if you've taken some time out of your busy schedules to support my channel by hitting that subscribe button or like button, I really do appreciate you for that. All right, so the fall time is one of those times of year where some days you're around the bait, some days you are not, but it's most important to put yourself in a position where you're in really likable places where bait wants to be. And I think pinch points is probably the best place to start when you're trying to find spots that are going to have the forage and hopefully the bass. So in the fall time, you don't really have all the benefits that you have in the other seasons. You know, when you think of the pre-spawn or the spawn, I really like big bays and the pre-spawn, they're going to be out in front of the bays. And then as the weather progresses, the water gets warmer, the days get longer, bass are going to be moving into those areas. It's not super predictable, but you can look on a weather app and say, look, we've got a long warming trend. That's going to bring some fish, you know, if it's February, March to the pre-spawn, if it's April or May into the spawning areas. This time of year in the fall, you really don't have that luxury. You're banking everything on the bait, which is super unpredictable. So very important. Again, I think it's, it's not so much about those big bays, those big coves where fish are just traveling. Um, if it's a certain type of rock or shell that they're getting on, and then they're going into places where they're obvious spawning areas this time of year, it, it's totally a toss up. And you also don't have that luxury of fish are going to continuously come. You know, if it's the, the end of March, April, you know, fish are, are moving along. You're just going to keep having fish show up in your areas. You may catch a bunch one day and it may totally reload the next day in the fall that rarely happens. You know, whatever reason had them there yesterday and you caught a bunch, you're typically not going to get that same reason tomorrow. The bait's most likely going to move and fish are not going to reload. So I think it's very important to stay around those pinch points. So I'm going to go over a couple different pinch points depending on what style lake you have. So if you're way up a river, most of the little entrances into the backwaters are going to be the places that have the most current generator generated rather and that's where most of the bait fish any type of fish really is going to live so you have the best of all worlds right there now there are a bunch of different styles of fishing if there's matted vegetation you could flip around there if you have little shell bars a carolina rig a square bill so you really have a bunch of different options you know you may see fish schooling a popper uh, top water walking bait whatever it may be but those types of places pinch points are where you're going to have a lot of life just a good place to look but again if you really pound on one of those places think you're going to go back there the next day and get as many bites as you did yesterday it just doesn't happen like that i think we have this false sense of reality that we gain in the springtime where it's like there's fish there one day that's a reason why fish should come there the next day and if it's cover or it's weather oriented then yes but in the fall you don't really have the benefit of weather and the cover that's not really why the fish are there they're there for the bait the bait's probably moving you're probably not going to be around the bait in the same exact places two days in a row so i think that's always important to note now as you get further down the lake the mouths of the creeks if you have bridges if you have riprap banks those places are gonna always have bait. They're always gonna have fish. Unfortunately, they typically always have fishermen too. So you may be running into fishing pressure on those places, but I still like to mix those in. You know, I think not being around the bait and being around the bait, plus the fishermen, still probably a better option. So if you can get in those areas, throw a square wheel, spinner bait, all your favorite style baits, fish around the bait to at least get a feel if they're in that little general area. Now, the backs of the creeks are very popular. You hear a lot about that, and there are always going to be shad pushed in the backs of the creeks, but not always bass. A lot of times you will get back there, you're seeing too much bait, and you're not catching anything. And it's just overwhelming. So that's not always a place where they can be. It's a good place to start, good place to check. But you gotta realize that you have a heavy rain, could muddy that area up, and just because the bait's there doesn't mean the bass are there. Now, as you get further down the lake, you are going to have basically a lot of options in, you know, bass can be anywhere. They can be in any depth. This 
the shallower, flatter side of the lake is where I'm always going to look at in the fall. So you get down the lake, you have some bigger, bigger creeks typically down there. So those are going to come alive this time of year, but get on the flatter side of the lake if you're going to look on the main lake and take with a grain of salt that the fishing is typically not as good on the main lake. Now, if you wind up running into a school of bass, that could be the best spot on the lake, but not necessarily always, you know, gonna be on. Most of the time in the fall, the main lake is one of the tougher places to try to locate bass, but make sure you stay on the flatter side of the lake. Now, as you get into those bigger creeks, typically I think that there is a mix from the main lake living around the mouth and then the fish that are already creek fish year round, they're gonna be around the mouth. So I think your best populations in those bigger creeks down by the dam are going to be right around the mouth. So that's the secondary point deal that everyone talks about. Your first little coves and bays right around the mouth. If you have some shallow water, that's where I typically like to look. So as you get into a creek, your first couple stretches, you know, right, right to your right, straight ahead and to your left, that's where I really like to start. And that is a pretty good sign. Is this creek on or is it not? So try that, guys, this fall. Good luck to you, and I'll see you on the water.